Hello, I am Tulum. Welcome to the medical news on the SBTN show from Washington, D.C. In the medical news today, we will talk about gout and the latest medication. Gout is a kind of arthritis, is most common in middle-aged men and affects many Americans as well as Asians each year. Here with us today is Dr. Sang Tran, who is currently practicing internal medicine in Falls Church, Virginia. Dr. Tran will present some information about gout and the newest medication based on the latest findings. Welcome to our medical news show, Dr. Tran. It's welcome and uh, really is a welcome to our medical news uh, show and also it's welcome uh, uh, Ms. Lam. Uh, sir, uh, today we're going to discuss about gout and the newest medication that uh, the, the many doctors have ex been excited about this. Uh, first of all, could you please explain to our audience uh, what, uh, what is, what is ca gout and what causes this disease? This gout is a very common disease and uh, it causes gout arthritis. This is one kind of uh, arthritis that has been described a long time ago. But the father of medicine is called, his name is Hippocrat. The Hippocrat is described <coughs> the disease like, you know, the middle-aged man suddenly develops severe pain and the toes and uh, all the foot that he could not really walk. And uh, back then, Hippocrat did not really know exactly what causing that. And he believed there's some kind of toxic liquid in there uh, causing the problem. And therefore, the French usually use the term is good. Good is French term to describe the liquid. And in Vietnamese, we call it good because it comes from French. And also because you're just using the uh, Chinese languages, tong uh, phong, to describe the disease. But mainly, this is a disease causing by the uric acid. But we have to wait until, uh, you know, uh, uh, about 17 centuries before we detected uh, the man to detect that is uh, Lewin Hook and he's the one who really using the first microscope to find out what really wrong with the body by using the microscope to look at the blood and look at the substance from the joint and he found out there's some chemicals in that and he believed it triggers the disease and nowadays we know this uric acid and until, uh, you know, it's about almost about 1848, uh, and there's uh, scientists in um, uh, Garrett and, and using the new technology, analyzed the blood, and he found this correlation between the level of uric acid in the blood and the, the disease. So right now we know for sure that triggered by the high uric acid in the blood and the accumulations of the uric acid in the joint and causing gouty arthritis. So can you describe the signs or symptoms of this disease? The signs and symptoms of disease is very simple because it's multiple when they develop gout, they can remember. But if you never had any gout, you just remember. And it's come very suddenly. And the people develop like redness, swelling, and it's very hot and touch and very tender. And most people cannot walk. And if they show up in the office, usually they either walk with the crutches or they use wheelchair. And that's the symptom that the people you know, describe. And mostly happen in the foot, especially the first toes. So a young man or middle-aged man suddenly develop pain, cannot walk, and get some swelling in the toes, most likely they have gout, especially people really like to eat or drink. Uh, sir, gout is a kind of arthritis. How can a patient know that he got attacked by gout uh, instead of other kind of arthritis? Yes, because that's the job of the physician to detect whether it's really this gout uh, related or a different kind of disease we call arthritis because over age we have also arthritis. We have different kind of disease we call arthritis. But to make sure the patient has a gout, then the physician has to rely on the symptoms and then look at the, the toes and the foot to see exactly what happened. If they're not sure, they can order the x-rays and uh, to look at the x-ray of the toes to see the destructions of the joint causing by uric acid. 
and then measure the amount of urine in the blood, usually higher than 6 mg per dl. Uh, and then if finally the best way, 100% is sure, is they get some fluid from the joint and look at the amount of the, the crystals from urine sit in the, in the blood. In the next few slides, you can see on the first slide, you can see the, um, the, the pictures of the big toes with the destructions of the joint causing by gout. And then you can see the real pictures of the foot that people develop gout. And the touch picture you can see is gout developed in the fingers as well. And the next one is in the elbow. Now these locations are very common in gout. It's not just the, the, the toes. So now the next one, you can see the x-ray. You see the destruction of the first toes on the x-ray on people who have gouty arthritis. And finally, if you look at the pictures here, you can see very tiny needles. needles. These are the crystals found the fluid aspirate from from the joint. These are the key to make the diagnosis. This is definitely is gouty arthritis. So um, how can you tell whether a person is um, more prone or have high risk in a gout disease? And gout also, is it a genetic disease? Yes, definitely it is because it's these random families and uh, we don't have much time to talk about that. But mostly people is men and then this is obese and like to eat a lot of meat and drink beers, so basically, and then run the family. So you know, these are the, the people who have some high risk to develop gout, especially. So therefore, in the old days, more of the king and more of the rich and famous people they develop gout because they eat a lot and they usually like to drink, as well as beer and different kind of alcohol. But beer is the most important. Therefore, in the old days, we call king disease. I mean, the disease related to the owner king and the rich people, but now today they recognize it also happened to the poor because the poor are drinking more because of the economy and everything and they, you know, they eat but they really not really careless about choosing the good food, but the rich people now pay attention more on how to eat healthy food. So right now it's transferred from the disease of the king and the rich to the disease of the, 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 the lower class as well uh, right now based on the study. But the second group is people who really the medicine they're taking for to treat, uh, you know, edema. I mean, there's the retention of water in the body or hypertension. Uh, for instance, like the diuretics and furosemide and hydrochlorothiazide is very commonly used in the people with hypertension, and they can trigger gout because they decrease the excretion of urethrocyte to the kidney. And especially now, a day we use a lot of aspirin to prevent stroke, prevent heart attack, but the aspirin with high dose can decrease the urinacid as well. So these are the, the key, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, the trigger more risk for people who belong to that group in using this medication. So uh, please tell us what, uh, what the current treatment for gals are for example, uh, the use of medication, uh, the uh, restriction of diet, or furthermore, can gout be uh, cured permanently? Yes, I think it's just uh, three parts of that. It's just, uh, the first one is the diet is the most important one because as we notice that we're able to control the diet, especially avoid the meat. The meat provides the purine and triggers uric acid. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not just for the meat because the uh, organ meat like liver, kidney, and different things that the Asian people like to eat have a lot of purine as well. And along with that is uh, the people with gout arthritis, they have to avoid asparagus, uh, different beans like uh, lima beans, uh, black beans, and because they, especially tofu, especially having a lot of protein. And therefore, the people really you know, it's, uh, like vegetarian also develop gout as well if they eat a lot of uh, these food as well. But it's uh, very important is they have to avoid beers and alcohol because that that's combined at the, 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 the preventive uh, uh, approach to treat the disease. But certainly we have the medication. But really, uh, in the history of gout, because the most medicine we use is long term. And the condition is using to treat the uh, gout has been using for hundred years and a long times ago 
and uh, Middle East, and they use from the herbal medicine and transform to. And with the technology, we make the medicine conscious in how to treat the gout. And then we, beside that, we use the anti-inflammation medication like indocin, uh, ibuprofen, and including prednisone, a corticosteroid, to decrease the swelling of the, the gout. And uh, beside that, we have the medication to suppress the uracid or decrease the amount of uracid in the blood like allopyrinol and propenicid, propenicid to excrete the uracid to the kidney. But for the last 15 years, 50 years, uh, we haven't had any really new medication. Until this year, 2009, we have new medication come out to help people with gout. And this is very exciting for, uh, for most physicians or most of the healthcare professionals because you have, at least we have something new to, to choose to use. What about can it be cured completely? Cannot be cured because when uracids accumulates in the genre, it stay, usually it helps stay there. The only thing we have to do is to prevent uracid from accumulating more in the shown. Because, because if they accumulating more, then they develop different kind of swelling, and we call it toe fire. They mean big swelling in the hands, the toes, and different area, knee and the elbow. And that's, that's, that's so bad. And usually people develop pain every day. It's not, not attack anymore, but they develop pain and every day. It's difficult to, to treat. So let's talk about the, the most excited news that you talk about, uh, the new medication that um, you mentioned earlier. Uh, how effective this medication is? Yes, the medication is, is really is, uh, a little bit uh, excited, but not really the breakthrough in medicine because uh, this medication has been studied for years and uh, they really approved in Europe in last year in April. But this year in the United States, the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration approved this medication to use for gout in uh, March of uh, 2009. Basically, this medication is to decrease the uracid production in the blood. Remember, in the biochemistry and the only chemistry is in the blood. Mostly, whatever we eat, the protein will go to the blood. And from protein, they break down to purine. And from purine, they have to go to different steps to break down into hypoxanthin. From hypoxanthin, they go to xanthin. And for centin, they will break down further to uric acid that the final product needs to be excreted to the body. Now, in this step of the chemical reaction, they need the, the chemical to catalyze that. We call centin oxidase. So antin oxidase catalyze the production of uric acid throughout the step in the chemicals happen in the blood. Where this medication blocks the centin oxidase, Therefore, they decrease the amount of uracil production in the blood. So that's mainly the main action of this medication. So therefore, when we use this, we hopefully we decrease the uracil in the blood, then prevent the uracil to accumulate in the joint, and hopefully prevent the acute attack. So before closing the medical news show, uh, uh, can you please give our audience some advice, general advice on the gout? My advice is to on the audience because the old saying is that everything, every sickness has come from the mouth, and everything disaster has come from the mouth as well. So the best thing is is we try to limit ourselves uh, different kind of food, especially with gout, avoid eat it too much meat and too much beans and uh, tofu stuff like that, and especially avoid drinking beers. And beers is the key; it triggers gout. So if we are able to do that, I think we may be able to prevent a lot of uh, sickness beside gout, like high cholesterol, and uh, prevent other uh, the disease in, uh, in the, the body as well. So this is, I think, is the advice and to every disease of the body, but it's mostly from eating too much. Thank you so much for being uh, with us today, sir. Yeah, thank you for listening to us uh, today, and uh, thank you again, uh, Ms. Lam. Dr. Sang Chun just shared with us some information about gout disease and the latest medication. We hope that the information provided by Dr. Tran has shed more light on the gout. That is all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. I am Tu Lam. We'll see you next time on the Medical News Show.